Welcome, FNUC57 here. Once again, I'm back on my Xbox One bringing you yet another Gears 5 video. In today's guide, I will be showing you how to master the new Operation 7 Content Drop 1 map, Afira. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, for the purposes of this video, be doing just the Horrid Frenzy, which is arguably more difficult than the full 1 to 50 wave horde game except for the fact that it's shorter so uh that'll make the recording a little easier and you don't have to worry about watching a two-hour video uh, it is on master difficulty you're looking for the standard set of modifiers which now has been switched to aggressive enemies and of course enemies regenerating their health shout out here to Nasty, Casper, Anubis, and Metal for helping me out with this. Your class setup doesn't matter too terribly much. If you've been following along with the game, you should be fine. If you do have any questions, just ask. But you definitely want to have a mechanic. And with the buff to Combat Medic, it's not a bad idea to have a Combat Medic or possibly a Jack, just in case things go in a very negative manner but as with any map you need to have a boss killing class you really should have a mechanic or an engineer of some kind for horde frenzy generally the mechanic is preferred because you can build stuff cheaper which means you can build the fortifications earlier if you're going to do this on a 1 to 50 game you could substitute relatively easily the mechanic with a robotics expert personal preference um, there's not really a whole lot of spots to set up on this map so it's pretty much spawn or opposite side of spawn it is a very large map in comparison to some of the other horde maps so it's actually kind of beneficial that more aggressive enemies is active but there isn't a whole lot of cover. So, like, you got one side, the cog spawn side, and of course, you got the other swarm spawn side. Um, you could try to set up in the building, but uh, this is, this is like just, it's a terrible defense section for if you set up in this, like, little motel hotel area like if you set up in this area then you're just going to get shot from so many different directions it's not even funny uh, so you're pretty much going to go to whichever spawn side the taps are closest to and that's always going to be a little interesting so I'm going to use my alt right off the bat because we were a little slow on this whole, uh, you know, placing the fabricator thing. And unfortunately, we did get juvies in the first wave, which definitely make things a lot more difficult. So it is nice if you have a pilot because obviously pilot can give you a little bit of time to clear the wave. Pilot's very useful on almost every single horde map. So if you play pilot or you know someone that does play pilot, it should make your lives a lot easier regardless of the map that you're playing. At the very least, it can uh, buy you a bit of time, so to speak. Most classes are going to need to deposit their initial starting power unless you've determined that to be non-required with your particular team but overall I would recommend it especially if you have multiple classes that have the need for a weapons locker a handful of barriers just to kinda hold the enemies back slow them down a bit and then you need to get weapon lockers up, just like normal. So right now we got two classes that rely on weapons lockers. Myself and the demo, which means we're going to need two weapon lockers at level four relatively quickly. And then, of course, start filling up the 
weapon lockers by either A, killing yourself, or B, waiting for the weapons for the scions that spawn to carry them. And of course, you do want to try and keep the taps, if at all possible. Which obviously that can be more difficult than, uh, like sometimes. <laughs> now, metal is going to try and fill up this locker. We have both energy taps. As I said, frenzy is a little more intense than just regular horde especially in the beginning, so I figured for the purposes of the video, we'll do that. I just had to throw my drop shot on that locker because I got no ammo. Of course, you can also kill yourself, too, like at the end of the wave. So coordinate with your team, coordinate with your engineer, see what you need to do and when you need to do it. And then depending upon your class, if you do need to upgrade perks, when your engineer says that it's okay, then you can go ahead and do perks. Obviously for pilot, it's ammo capacity, it. one into ultimate cooldown. Unfortunately, these enemies also like to hide in the buildings. So, because of the size of this map that we're playing on, it's uh, definitely a little annoying. Like, this is the speed of the enemies, even with more aggressive enemies on. A quick tip for anyone if you don't already know, the rejects are really easy to deal with. You shoot them in the leg, you blow off their leg, they'll crawl towards you and then eventually inevitably self-destruct. So it makes life a little easier. You can save some ammo on killing them if you can't get behind them. I got killed for free, so at least I get another drop shot. Be careful guys. A popper decided to uh, have fun. Also keep in mind that if you do die and you're revived during the wave, you'll come back with like half of your maximum ammo. There is a Juvie glitched out dancing on the table in the building if you want to leave it alive. You just leave that one alone and then uh, we can get everything set up. Now, you're not going to be guaranteed to get the enemies that glitched out, but it does happen fairly frequently with this game, actually. So, you'll probably run into that situation. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here in just a second. So, as you can see, I didn't come back with full ammo. I came back with, like, half ammo. Oh, no, they killed him. Oh, well. I was going to show you the glitched out dancing juvie, but somebody decided to kill him ahead of time. That's uh, very disappointing. Anyways, just try to get the taps.
you always want to keep the taps as much as possible. You'll probably have to end up depositing some, so just keep that in mind. This way, at least I can have three drop shots. And then once you get the lockers that are required up to four, obviously you want to upgrade the barriers. It's a good idea to get the barriers in the front up to level two as soon as possible. And then you'll want to get a second row of level two barriers. With more aggressive enemies, you pretty much always should have two sets of level two barriers and like i mentioned earlier this map is just really slow with more aggressive enemies as you see we're on master difficulty with survivor more health more lethal regen penalty aggressive enemies regeneration and power drain for my skill cards we have the bleeding mulcher aggressive armor silverback salvo the hammer and cold finish and of course my Torah duty objectives are already done. That's why I did not want to uh, record doing a 1 to 50 game on this map. I will be more than happy to make a video showcasing how you handle every boss wave and everything on a full 1 to 50 game if it is desired, but uh, those videos are usually about an hour even with more aggressive enemies so also with the addition of the lambent to hoard it's made it so that it takes even longer because a lambent enemy will spawn in and then the regular enemies the swarm and the regular locust enemies that are in the game will all go after the lambent enemy and try to kill it You trying to die, Metal? That answers that question. I didn't see any other drop shots out here, so I'm going to have to kill myself again. Well, once my locker's upgraded, at least. Yeah, I don't have an incendiary, but I also have stim, so. Thank you. <clears throat> Pro tip for anyone, if you want to kill yourself, obviously, if you have stim, that's going to prevent you from doing that. But uh, with just about any class in the game, what you want to do is you want to buy a set of incendiary grenades and then do what I did there the first time which is where you toss one incendiary grenade down, drop the other incendiary, and then you can kill yourself twice for the cost of one set of grenades. All right. Now the thing is we can't have stim and then done. All right, so now I have a locker full of drop shots. We can get this party going. The only thing that'll be a little bit different when you do this on a 1 to 50 game is um, you'll actually be able to 
build a crap load of more fortifications and the waves won't be quite as intense in the beginning. Now, now this is fun because I can just rotate drop shots. No, I got a full locker, so I'm good. No. Like I said, it's really fun when you have a pilot. Depending on the boss you get, pilots all can just do crazy amounts of damage if you get enough damage with your salvo card and the enemies come at you quick enough it's actually possible to keep the sal the silver back active for more than one wave but here's an example of that problem with the lambent enemy that lambent drone spawned and now these guys these regular boltors and whatnot they're all over here just fighting the lambent enemy because they can. Which, if you ask me, is a really annoying mechanic. I, I honestly wish that the lambent enemies were not in the game. Just my personal opinion, of course, but... Alright, let's see, where'd that energy tap spawn at? Ideally, if you're going to do a 1-50 to 50 match, you'll get better energy taps. Kind of weird uh, playing pilot using the coal skin. Make sure if you are rotating around your weapon locker that you always rotate in the same direction whenever possible. So like clockwise or counterclockwise. We should get one more locker just for uh, cryo cannon. Anyone that might happen to need a regular weapon thrown on there. Because I'm rotating drop shots right now. Which, of course, we get scions that are carrying drop shots after I've killed myself to get my drop shots. Keep an eye on how many enemies are left. Keep an eye on the energy taps. Ideally, get the energy taps every single wave. It will make your life easier. It does extend how long the game takes, but it helps out quite a bit. It's a lot of extra power. Especially when you're missing, like, two energy taps. But you do have to be careful because the enemies sometimes can be um, more than a little bit ridiculously brutal. 
and they won't even try to down you. Like that bolter, he literally fired two shots, downing and then killing metal. So be very careful with more aggressive enemies on. Sometimes they don't give you the opportunity to actually be down but not out. This is a really cool, like, aesthetically pleasing map. I like it. I like the background for it. But at the same time, I'm not a really big fan of this map for Horde. Uh, you can't vault over these little pieces of cover right here. So it's not easy to get to the lower section of this hotel. Looks cool as hell. Wish there was an Easter egg. Who knows? There might be an Easter egg on this map that I just don't know about. But for Horde, it's just not its not feasible to really hold down the hotel. So in my opinion, it's not as much fun. Now, normally I would say a horde frenzy on master difficulty would take about 20 to 30 minutes with the more aggressive enemies on. But sadly, with this particular map, even if you skip getting the energy taps every single wave, you're probably looking at closer to the 30 minutes to an hour. So just make sure you have that time. Uh, this is kind of like playing Spire. Oh my god, we got a boom shot in the base. I was trying to down it. I shot it twice. What the hell? Yeah, that definitely should not have killed it. You are glitched in a terrible spot right now, Anubis. We've got enemies in you were invisible. You were in your ultimate, Anubis. gotta love it when you try to do a game and the game decides oh we're gonna have some unique glitches we also got an elite grenadier tossing frags in the base
Also, the cover on this map is kind of terrible. I really wish we could hold up in the hotel. But you get shot from too many different directions there. Good one. I'm stunning the scion on the right. All right, we got the taps now. Wow. Okay. I was behind him and uh, still got taken down by that melee. Wow. Fun times. This game is just being so freaking buggy since Op 7's launch. I hope they get all the bugs fixed soon, because it's ridiculous, especially the bug where it's eating my coins. That is ridiculous. Try to skip the waves whenever possible. It doesn't save a lot of time, but it does save some time, which kind of makes life easier. Oh, Wakatu. That is, like, unfortunate in every sense of the word. The Wakatu can literally show up right in your base and just down or even insta-kill players. It's more than a little broken, if you ask me. And then sometimes your uh, Silverback ultimate won't activate. That's always fun when that happens. Gotta watch out for these little fart bubbles. Oh, I can't get in my alt right now. God, this is so buggy. Gotta get rid of the stump. Hey, 
just keep trying different spots if you run into the glitch that I'm running into right now with not being able to use my ultimate. Come on, get low enough health you can freeze. There we go. Die, 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 die. I hate that boss. That boss literally should never exist in Horde. There we go. Got the boss power just in time. This run's definitely being a little bit hairy since we have a lot of bugs. But I'm doing this on, uh, well, basically like less than 20 hours after this map and Operation 7 have been released. So it's pretty crazy. This map is actually fairly good for pilot's alt, so if you want to spec a little bit into the cooldown earlier, you can, and it's actually efficient. Just make sure you're coordinating with the rest of your team, the classes that need to perk versus the classes that don't need to perk, and make sure that the engineer is not in need of power to actually get the fortifications and barriers and everything up, because if the engineer is in need of power then uh, it's going to be a very painful game and with more aggressive enemies on you're probably going to get overrun if you're not careful a lot of people say pilot isn't a damage dealer class but pilot is actually a really good damage dealing class not like the highest damage dealer but it's a very good damage dealer if you have the hammer card equipped for your drop shot so your drop shot does more damage but the major upgrade is the fact that your drop shot stuns enemies and stunned enemies aren't going to be shooting you downing you downing your teammates or just destroying your fortifications because they're jerks that way You do have to be careful of locust enemies, though, because the locust enemies, well, they get stunned in terms of they don't shoot, but they continue to run around, so just be careful with that. We have two waves left. We're holding the taps fairly well, which is a very big bonus right now. At least we're able to hold three taps. And the fourth tap is in a really good location for us, so we're good. You also got to watch out for sires.
All right, we just have two more waves to go. Not bad. A lot of times enemies glitch out in this building. Like this pouncer. This pouncer's just glitched. You can also throw up a decoy on, like, the last couple waves. It's up to the engineers to when they actually feel comfortable building a decoy. A couple points, one or two, into health is also always a good thing. And then uh, I generally go 10 on my ammo capacity, 10 on my damage, and if at all possible, 5 on my ultimate cooldown with only one or two points in the uh, increased health this way it's actually possible to get your alt back on the same wave also you gotta worry about bastions but if you stun the Bastion with the blast from your drop shot, it'll stop shielding the target, which is really helpful. I'll help you more with the class Anubis after this. I can't go over it right now. If you can, try to hit the perfect active reload with your drop. Because it does more damage and it descends faster. So, that really is nice. Obviously, since there's not a lot of working room around here, be careful that you don't get in your teammates' way if you've got teammates using explosive weapons. Also, watch out for palace guards. Palace guards are a new addition. The problem with a palace guard is they will pick up any weapon on the map if they want it. And they will prioritize insta-killing you as opposed to just downing you. I almost messed up the rotation on my locker right there. We're doing this a little bit unconventionally because uh, the game's being glitchy, as you've seen, multiple glitches with players getting stuck and whatnot. And uh, Anubis is actually working on a new character while we're doing this. So obviously you can make the game either easier or more difficult on yourself depending on like what classes you run and if you run max level classes or not. You gotta watch out for boss wardens. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep stunning this warden. Great. 
and you see how much damage the drop shot does, especially when you get a headshot on that warden. Does a crazy amount of damage. The game also does seem to lag a little bit when the mechanic uses his ultimate and deploys the turret now. So, bear that in mind. Um, I don't know if you've seen on the kill cam or not. Uh, the kill feed, I should say, not the kill cam. But Metal had his head blown off by a torque bow fired from a palace guard. And that's how we do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how we do it. A little bit rocky, not our meta run, but thanks to my friends, we just got the Masters done for Afira. First try, no practice runs, nothing. That's the frenzy. And uh, let's go ahead and see if the bug persists. And it looks like the bug did not persist this time with eating my coins, which is nice. So maybe they fixed it earlier, but uh, I lost over 10,000 coins with the game on my previous dailies because every time I would auto scrap a card, instead of giving me the coins, it would actually take the coins away from me. So tons of weird bugs going on. I hope this guide helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to just go ahead and ask me and I will do my absolute best to help you guys out. Until next time, make sure that you, of course, if you enjoy the video, like it, subscribe for more content, and most importantly, my fellow gears, stay frosty.